again and welcome back to Southeast Texas Weekly. I'm your humble reporter, Kevin Steele. Great to see you once again. Let's talk politics, shall we? And to do so, we have a panel. We have a new panelist, in fact. Christy Wendler joins us from the Wendler Law Firm. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for the invite. Also, of course, we have Godfrey Leggett coming to us as a Democratic activist. Always good to see you, sir. Nice to and be And Beaumont here, City Councilman W.L. Pace. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Well, maybe to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Strong on the right part of that. Tell us about your where were you raised? I was raised in Mexico. Guadalajara, Most Mexico. Of my life. How about this? Okay, and you're an immigration attorney? Yes, sir. And so you are perfectly situated to talk about a important issue uh, just that. addressed by the president from the Oval Office. Uh, this notion, and at the time of this taping, uh, it's important to note that the uh, that the argument is fierce. The government shutdown is is well underway. Uh, it's beginning to pitch. Federal employees are beginning to uh, notice that uh, they're, they're not getting paid. And all of this over uh, the border wall as proposed by the President uh, of the United States. Did the President, in fact, manufacture a crisis on the border so he could get his border wall? I turn hmm. to you, ma'am, to begin it off. Well, I would say if the fact is correct that 20,000 children have come in in the last few weeks alone. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a crisis to me mm -hmm. that we it, need to pay attention is to. Is it a crisis? Oh, it absolutely is. And what's amazing is when you see Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, who voted for more money than the $5.7 billion, okay? Mm -hmm. Not for and, a wall. Yeah, well, hypothetically, okay. border security, mm -hmm. 50, mm -hmm. right at 50 billion. $500 billion worth of drugs come over the wall. If that's not a crisis, and we know how many people are dying because of opioid overdose, fentanyl that comes through the southern border, no. if for no other reason that How is that a not a crisis? Enough. Yes, because how is it that doesn't not come, a crisis? It doesn't come with guys with bags under their arms carrying it in. It comes in cars through the checkpoints, the regular... Checkpoints. Are you That's satisfied that terrorism out. is not an issue at the southern border? You're well, yes, satisfied I am. that yeah, Most that, of the, that there's, that there's all no the people to... that destroyed the twin towers and and you know all those other terrorist attacks that occurred back in 2000 came in on airplanes. Okay. And most we, of the terrorists that we think are just here, to say what? Well, well, that and they're still here, so right. we can't we'll come through the southern border. Mm -hmm. how, how do we know how they're coming in? I mean, really? Well, how, do they, got, how do we know that? How, is 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 it such that we should not, in fact, do a physical barrier of some sort on the southern border? Yes, that's border? right. We should not do a physical barrier. Why? Of some sort. Why should we? Because it's a waste of time and effort and money. It money. works everywhere except in uh, the southern United States. It uh, works in Israel. No. Yes, it does. No. It works at the Vatican. No. It even works at Nancy Pelosi's gated neighborhood. How, how about it? How, you know, how tall it works at our own homes. About? Well, it's, it works at our homes, right? Oh, no, you, don't a lot of us have gates. Lock the door I lock the house. door and I ask people when they come in what their purpose is for coming, what their name is. Yeah. Godfrey Leggett, so. why do undocumented immigrants not pay income taxes they do in this pay country? Income tax. Tell us more. They do pay income tax. Elaborate. Because now. you you have to you have to fill out a form. She can tell you this is true, and, and you will pay income taxes. Mm -hmm. if, if what is the threat? Legally, Ultimately, we get to this notion legally. of what's the threat, right? We, right. We, we, we begin to see the argument well, of the president. He uh, has a uh, obviously a, a strong ethic that he wants to keep out undocumented immigrants uh, from this country. Somehow I can't and in yet my mind why? get ethics and Donald Trump in the same sense. Well, I know. That's, that's hard to grasp. It Let really me tell is. you what ethics is not. Ethical is not Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton all voting for border security, which included a uh, wall no, of some sort. It did not. Of, of no, some oh, sort. Okay. Of some sort. Go back to the Secure Fence Act. Of fence. Yes, yeah, Secure Fence Act. Fence, yeah. a wall, fence. Something to that, fence, to that notion. A fence, a wall, a steel barrier. They voted for it. The only reason, the only reason they oppose this is because Donald Trump is for it. When he got elected, the first thing you out it's of, more personal. It, it absolutely it's, is. It's Remember a this, Kevin. Okay, and I know you do. And, 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 we, and we talked. And we talked when when Donald Trump got elected. And I told you he was going to get elected. And my good friend Godfrey said Hillary will win in a landslide. She when, should have. When, well, she did. <laughs> okay. When he got elected, the first thing out of Nancy Pelosi's mouth 
and Chuck Schumer was resist. Mm -hmm. Resist. Exactly. Resi and they've been doing it for two and years. I applaud them for mm -hmm. it. Well, I, I'm glad that they want to do that, but that doesn't help the 320 million citizens. The man we have the president of our threat. United States is a moron. He's misguided. He doesn't read. He doesn't even Don't read the Daily Don't talk about brief. Chuck Schumer like no, that. No, I'm talking about your... Oh. Mr. Trump. Oh, he's a oh, moron. Uh, he's a billionaire moron. No, he's not a billionaire. He's not a billionaire. A hundred millionaire. Show, no, well, might know. be fifty million or below. Uh -oh. He's it's going from the tax returns now. Well, exactly. Show me the tax returns. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> Show me Where's the money. Cuba Gooding Jr. and Tom Cruise when you need. Them, you know? <laughs> the Cato Institute says that migrants, illegal or legal, are less likely to offend the president. Speaking from the Oval Office, referencing four thousand killings involving undocumented immigrants. Referencing 30,000 sex crimes. I don't know where you got that number. Over what immigrants. period of time is that? But the Cato Were they all Institute uh, Mexican in two, two years from other countries? You Cato, don't know any of that, Kevin. Cato Institute and reporting that Trump. migrants are less likely to offend. What do we make of these disparate well, we, pieces of information? Go ahead, Christy. You're new here. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's okay. You have to um, fight to get <laughs> in here, my friend. Jump in. You know, I, I represent many outstanding uh, law-abiding uh, immigrants, and so we have to be careful to differentiate between documented and undocumented uh -huh. immigrants and mm -hmm. not lump, lump them all together. Um, but, you know, I can't speak to those statistics, mm -hmm. but I will say that, um, you know, uh, we, I don't think a, a, a border is immoral, immoral, uh, as, as I think it, you know, we all, right, left, we're all interested uh, but, in our, our, but, our borders being secure. But Christy, don't you agree secured. what's immoral is not people that come to this country and want to have a job and live here, we don't let them go before an immigration judge. We tell them, oh, we're too busy, come back tomorrow. I agree with you there. I think that we need tomorrow. to. What I was disappointed with last night is that there was not more um, uh, 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 immigration law reform mentioned. We, that's what uh, we desperately need. Uh, we have millions but, of immigrants here. we have to here. take a break. Okay. And, and with that, <laughs> we, we, we shall return in just moments to talk further about this, uh, this notion of what's going on at the border after this break. Stay with us. You work hard for your company, and you deserve a safe work environment. Since 1957, Waldman Smallwood has been fighting for the rights of our clients. Waldman Smallwood, 1-800-333-9151. Right now, I'm all about Planet Fitness. It's only $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Now through January 15th, get down with your judgment free sale. For just one dollar down. Offer ends Tuesday, January 15th. And we're back on Sally Texas Weekly. Joining us to talk further about this notion of what's happening at the border, the great Todd Hickman with Asset Growth hey, Associates. Great to see you, man. Oh, man. Uh, he is a uh, media maven at this point. Well, He's everywhere. You can find him on radio, TV. I mean, let's not even get into it. We don't have the time. Great to see you, though. Good to see you. There is no need for a national emergency, according to a great many Americans. Most Americans don't believe we have a crisis at the border and the president is prepared to say there is a national emergency a clear and present danger and that the borders should be closed he'll use the military if need be he wants a physical barrier and he wants it now the Cato Institute reporting in a study two years ago immigrants legal or illegal are less likely to offend than the average population of the United States what's the emergency and, and the number of immigrants coming to this country has been steadily declining over the last five years I am what's confused. the emergency I thought that we just went through a few months of uh, children dying at the border children. and children being put into cages yes. but this is all of a sudden is not supposed to be an emergency oh, it is an emergency but it's an emergency created by Mr. Trump it didn't have to happen I'm sorry I thought Barack Hussein Obama no. was also putting people no, families no, no, in no, not Numbers, oh, in, my, in my opinion, the emergency is we need to reform our laws to de-incentivize coming here. You know, 20,000 children coming here in the last few weeks, to me that is a crisis. Well, Christy, we need to de-incentivize well, them coming. Their, their and our laws are... Their, par their parents came with no, them. No, not all yes, of them. Yes, and even them. if they did, we're incentivizing them coming. At, I believe it's the TVPRA uh, that was passed. It, it, it provides a pathway for these children coming in on asylum to come in and then Later, later petition for their family members, great. And, but we're putting, we're putting them through very dangerous journeys. Well, um, the parents decided that, not us. Right, it, and we need to de-incentivize that. Right. That's it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So. Let's move I mean, to this notion of the, of, the, of the heroin. 300 killed a day 
buy heroin. The fact checkers pulled it all out. The DEA's heroin signature program from 2016 uh, is used in the president's speech from the Oval Office that 90% of the heroin coming into the United States comes in through the southern border. Yes, evidently, according to this survey, it uh, is coming in through legal ports of entry, but it's coming in through the southern border. Is a, a physical barrier not needed uh, 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 along the, the southern border? And, you know, when you start to look at this notion of the cost of the thing, is there any way a physical barrier really can look, I just deter a, I just had a root canal a couple of weeks ago. You did? A in root canal. Canal. And my dentist explained to me that he couldn't give me painkillers because he was actually threatened by the uh, DEA, the, by the DEA yep. that they, they are more and more getting in between doctors and their patients. I was told, I was told to take over-the-counter medicine and it was no fun. And you have more doctors that are afraid now, so you have people... This is all nonsense. The war on drugs is nonsense. More people die from alcohol and tobacco individually than die from all legal and illegal drugs combined. Good argument. It's true. To answer your question, yes. When the government gets involved and tries to control markets, it's going to create markets and the black market will thrive. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what you're talking prohibition. about. Prohibition. We never learned from prohibition. Yeah. 300 killed a day, though, so but, as that takes me back to you. Why not uh, put a physical barrier at the southern border then? That's why? the crux of this whole argument. That's not, that's not going to solve the problem, Kevin. It's not going to... No. Well, and, and that They'll too throw is a rope a, over the thing, for a, goodness sake. Yeah. Will a physical barrier work, steel, concrete, or otherwise? But not that the drug dealers want to get their drugs in that way, but all they have to do is tie look, the drugs to a little balloon and let it we, float over. Look, first of all, th it's a myth. The idea that we're going to build a wall from Brownsville to Tijuana. Right. That's, right. The, that's not going to happen. The wall is only, all, all that President Trump is proposing is a wall in high traffic areas that are controlled by the cartels that they are using to bring drugs over. There's many ranches on the border that span both the American side and the Mexican <coughs> side. And these ranches have been there since the land grant days. You're not going to change that. Plus, there's three Indian reservations on the border that span the border. You're not Godfrey, going to put a wall up there. Godfrey Sorry. Christie, the Ike Dyke proposal is a $25 billion proposal. Twenty-five Ike billion. Dyke proposal. The Ike Dyke yeah. proposal. What is the you Ike Dyke to, pro to protect <laughs> against the uh, storm surge during hurricanes? Okay. It's okay. making ground. It's not been approved, but it's, it's making ground. Mm -hmm. The Ike Dyke proposal is a twenty-five billion dollar. He wants five point seven billion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not even he sure the Ike Dyke. I've idea. heard two to five. So I don't know. So I don't really know what he's asking for because I've heard different figures. And he's, and, and he's asking for five point seven initially. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Estimates say it'll be more like two hundred. Yeah. $50 billion to actually put a wall. Right. Well, I'm a Dave Ramsey follower, and I don't like going into debt, so well, that problem, part does bother me. <laughs> well, the, 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 the problem is, with all of the social services that illegals, from what I understand, you take a look at the uh, a study by the Heritage, Heritage Foundation, roughly $170 to $180 billion a year is spent on social services for illegals. Yes, when he says contribute. that the, that, that, that he will get Mexico to pay for the wall, mm -hmm. the savings alone would pay for the wall multiple times. No, it wouldn't. 180, that's the net, 170 to 180 billion in services that are doled out that are not they recouped. Is pay, that a net? They also pay mm -hmm. fees, taxes. But let's also, yeah, let's go back let's to this. also talk about how having um, immigrants working in, in, uh, the, in the types of jobs that they do, how it brings our costs down as consumers. Yes. That's an, we've got to look yeah. at all sides of this. So, the, the four um, so illegal immigrants and, in and, the, and you know, why? And, and, a lot of money. and so let, let's talk. If employers <laughs> we're not oppressing immigrants that were here by paying them lower rate wages. They're not. They're not paying them benefits and all that. Maybe they wouldn't be if they were do, giving them higher wages that they deserve. When a, when a 65 year old man is still making 30 years later eight dollars an hour doing the same job, that's oppression. Fifteen dollars should be the minimum wage. It's, it's slave, slave labor. labor. Mr. It's Trump. Mr. Trump should since, pay his illegal workers there at Mar-a-Lago fairly. And since he I brought agree, up Mar-a-Lago, he's out of here. <laughs> we'll take a break. And we will be back in just moments to talk further about this. Did you know you can go from a slouch to the slopes without the stress? Get there from here. Jack Brooks Regional Airport. Book now at AA.com. 
At the CMA Foundation, we believe every child should have the access and opportunity to participate in quality music programs. I'm Sarah Evans. Music has always been a huge part of my life. Music education isn't just important if you're going to make it your career. It also helps children develop the abilities that set them up for lifelong success. Music is transformative, and I want to ensure that it is never silenced. Learn more at itstartswithme.org. Every superhero has their kryptonite. This is a substantial wound. It's the Big Bang Theory, five nights a week. To track severe weather, download the 12 News Now app. And we're back on Southeast Texas Weekly. We are joined by three of the greatest guys you would ever want to meet. Jeff Lewis, Republican activist, is here. Privilege to get first billing there, Kevin. Excited about all this. Kent Badman, Hardin County GOP chairman, is here as Good well. Good to see you, Kevin. And Fernando Ramirez, Democratic activist. Great in the to middle. See you. We're ready. In the middle and ready to, <laughs> ready to fight. Uh, this Conservative this, sandwich here. <laughs> it's, it's going to be arguable if the president can say this is a national emergency at the, at the southern border of the United States. Is it a national emergency? Well, I think it's by national emergency by definition if the president says so. So, I mean, hey, uh, you know, this has been an ongoing emergency for 30 years. It's just that we haven't been able to do anything about it. So, you know, again, I don't think after tonight, and I'll be honest, I didn't even watch it last night because, quite frankly, I don't think anything's changed from yesterday before they spoke. So, you know, uh, I don't see anything change. And politically, we don't have the will to come together and figure out a good, uh, good solution. So... Moving along. What solution? What solution? Is there, a, is there a danger at all? Is there a threat from undocumented immigration into the United States, Fernando Rivera? There is, but it's not only from our border. It's from our other ports of entry. That is, I think, the figures that they put out there, lower numbers of terrorists come in through the border and the higher numbers come through other legal ports. Yeah. So, you know, we have to take that into, cons uh, into consideration. The perception that it's coming in through the Mexican border is the same perception that has clouded the issue hmm. that saying the Mexicans are responsible. Do Guatemala nationals, do Mexican nationals, do Salvadoran nationals that now live in the United States, do they see a threat from illegal immigration? Well, the, the threat that they see is because of all these people that are in caravans. They are delaying the process yep. of legal and no uh, process them. to mm -hmm. going through the immigration services. So right now, when it used to take three months to apply for your citizenship mm -hmm. and go take your test, it's taken a year and two months or more. Yeah. Caused by illegal immigration. Well said, Fernando. Well, the president stated from the elegant surroundings of the Oval Office that we should all be terrified. We should all be scared to death because 4,000 killings are committed each year by undocumented immigrants, and yet the Cato Institute reports that uh, immigrants are less likely to offend. Well, I, look. The vast majority of immigrants coming, even when they're coming illegally, are still great people that would love to work and do a good job here, but there's still that percentage. I can remember a time we didn't have school shootings. Most people can remember we didn't have these mass shootings. Well, and we don't we have school shootings by illegal, un we, undocumented children, though. Well, no, we have, no, but they're usually immigrants that came here illegally. The vast majority have come from the Middle East, not from Mexico, but they've still lots of times been, been immigrants yeah. or influenced by the teaching that they got in the process. Why, why are we no longer talking about our DACA students? These kids have been vetted for years mm -hmm. to be able to have a temporary presence here in the United States. Would you support school? a proposal if the president were to say, give me my physical barrier and I will give you uh, amnesty for the dreamers? Would you go for it? I would because we would solve one segment of yeah. a problem with our immigration that has been on the shelf and being used by both parties for their own political views. That's true, and that's on the it, table, by the way. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is, the border wall, the only reason there's, there's true resistance is because it's a Trump deal. Mm -hmm. And he's pushing it. Right. It's something that's been on the board 
with every president. For a long time, yeah. Yeah. And, but, the shut you know, you know, Your president uh, has shut the government down. My president shut it down? Your president, okay. in fact, made it such hey, Kevin, that federal uh, who, employees... Who has, uh, who has power over the purse? Prison, prison employees, in fact, do not uh, get a paycheck this week because... Your president shut the government down. Well, it's all about the border if you, wall, if, is it not? If, if you frame it like that, I'm taught to disagree. However, I do uh, completely agree that uh, people not getting paid for work they're performing is a travesty, and uh, I'm not a fan of that. Mm. So yeah. anytime we can resolve this quickly, I feel good about it. Okay, the government shutting down is not a fabulous solution. Now, is it a fact of life? Yeah, it is. You know how okay? your president... When you work in public sector and you see this happening three, four times, then you might want to try preparing for that. Well, you know, okay. like we that's all I'm like saying. I mean, I have to prepare sector. for layoffs yeah. and yeah. down seasons in my world. I mean, you got the same thing in yours. Yeah. When I worked with Southwestern Bell, I was a member of CWA union, and we knew that when the, it was coming up to contract time, you started squirreling away for what if, if mm -hmm. you have a, a strike, how long it's going to be. I can't, if I was a uh, government employee, I think I'd have a nest egg set Our government, aside. We do this all the time, don't we? We <laughs> shut it down all the time. You know, yeah. it's all about optics. <clears throat> what you saw was Chuck and Nancy standing up and saying they side with the illegals while the president sided with the American people. That was right. the optic that we saw last night. And they're so bad at that. I checked it. When Nancy Pelosi became Speaker of the House last time, there was 29, uh, 28 Democrat governors. There's now 21. So we can take more Nancy Pelosi because she helps the Republican cause with bad <laughs> optics. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> up by three from two years yeah, ago. Needs, yeah, to work, <laughs> needs to work on her self-awareness. So. And, and I think one, uh, of the, one of the things that really creates a problem is the figures that they give to the president and that he uses. It's all inclusive to the border mm -hmm. and the Mexican border. It has nothing to do with the other legal uh, ports mm -hmm. that... The majority of the bad persons that come is. through. And, and the thing is, I, as, as, as a Latino, uh, you know, I, I, I find that repulsive that yeah, they're away. only pointing to one segment of our country. And this segment of our country, uh, I had an uncle that was at the Battle of the Pulch. We, in uh, Port Arthur, we had uh, uh, Lucian Adams, mm -hmm. Congressional Medal of mm -hmm. Honor winner, Hispanic. We have contributed to this country for years, mm -hmm. but we've never received the proper respect and recognition that the Hispanic community deserves. Respect but and this, recognition, the paying but, of services, the paying of income taxes, and more when we come back. Yes. <laughs> and, and this whole discussion. Here at Real Cajun Seafood Restaurant and Bar, we take pride in our passion for creating mouth-watering meals. All of our food is locally sourced, and every dish is made the moment you order it. Whenever you're craving Cajun, we've got you covered. Check out our menu online, or come in and relax with your favorite drink in our casual atmosphere. And try our Bottoms Up beer for the perfect pour every time. Come for the food, stay for the fun at Real Cajun. And we're back on Southeast Texas Weekly, the services. We heard the notion that $170 billion to $180 billion in services are being doled out at our schools, at our public schools. Nothing in return from the undocumented immigrant. This, it goes to the threat that the president, the alleged threat, according to the president, that we face at the southern border. $170 to $180 billion a year from undocumented immigrants. Nothing in return. True, false? What are we thinking? How this false notion? is that? Very false. If, you, if a parent brings their kid in undocumented and goes into our school system because they're, ha they're entitled to an education, mm -hmm. okay? But those parents pay rent. They buy homes, they buy automil automobiles, they buy gas, they buy all the services that every citizen and resident pays. So they pay sales so tax, they pay, they pay taxes. on the gas, and look, on the cars. On the do they pay the government has issued, yeah, it's been several years that they came up with a PIN number that they give undocumented workers that they take to H&R Block or anybody preparing their income tax to use instead of a social security number so they can file the income tax and uh, get a return. The ITIN number. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know, the government knows who's working here undocumented, 
who's paying in taxes. Why don't we see those figures? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is the disconnect in America when many Americans yeah. believe that undocumented immigrants pay no income taxes in this country? Would you in, agree? In, you know, well, I'd say there's perception there, and there are some taxes that are paid. Do undocumented immigrants, paid, in okay? fact, pay into but, the pay into the country? Do they pay into the country? Well, I don't have social security numbers. I mean, you never cry out loud. So, I mean, uh, look, look, look. We said on this panel about four years ago that if you want to come here, you're going to figure out a way to come here, okay? I got no problem with that. We know that there's no way we're going to get rid of anywhere from 12 million to 20 million people that reside currently in the United States that don't belong here, okay? There, there's not enough transportation <laughs> assistance to help with that, okay? So we got to do something, and it's something will happen, okay? But what's the, what's the, the, deal, the, deal, yeah. the deal is is that the Democrats using this as a wedge issue to try to bring in more dependent voters. So I would propose to you, why don't we allow a system where you can apply for uh, citizenship? It's a late process of 15 years. You don't vote for the next four presidential elections. You in? Hmm? No. <laughs> okay. And well, now you see what it is. It's not about their citizenship, we're not the long hairs, we're not they're gonna vote. Pretty That's why the it. Democrats care about <laughs> Go this. For it. Well the thing is I come from uh, Hidalgo County, and we take voting seriously and mm -hmm. being a citizen. Because As during a citizen. the Ken during the <laughs> Kennedy elections, we take uh, voting so seriously that over three hundred Hispanics that had died got up from their graves and voted for Kennedy. I'm but, telling you, but, famous Democrat voters. But but here's here's the thing, most loyal we Democrat are, they got in the United States. Our Congress is dysfunctional. That's right. It no longer serves the people. That's right. It serves their own interests. It serves the interests of their president, their leader. And I think we as a people need to disconnect from that. And I think this new Congress that's coming in is going to shake up the Democratic and the Republican parties because it's not business as usual. Uh, but, if, but if I could say, I'm inclined to believe. If I could say it's the, the biggest same <laughs> speaker, <laughs> yeah, for but, example, on the but, Democratic side, it's the, the same majority leader. The biggest leader fear on the part of that speaker is that there is such a thing called the Trump wall. Mm -hmm. Obamacare disappeared. Obama has no legacy. They do not want Trump to have a legacy, so they will fight That's this right. wall as hard as they can until he no longer supports it. Kind of sounds petty. It kind of sounds petty. Well, <laughs> politics is petty, Kevin. I mean, <laughs> it's petty cash. This just in. It's only, this you know, in. $4 trillion at stake here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the shutdown ends when? We go with predictions then. Uh, how, how long before we see some kind of resolution here? Uh, both sides seem uh, thoroughly intransigent in, uh, in, in this whole ordeal. I'd like to see July, but I predict March. March. Yeah, and well, so what will happen at the end? What will uh, the resolution be? The politicians are going to start feeling the pressure from the voters, the, their constituents that are living now in their welfare system that is not going to be working, that's going to increase. People are going to find new jobs. Yeah. And so uh, that's where the pressure is going to come. Yeah. How does it end? How Dallas will have won a Super Bowl before the shutdown ends. <laughs> Boom. There the you go. Dallas Cowboys actually made it into the program. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. We appreciate go it. Dallas. Go there we Cowboys. Go. Hey, 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 See, bipartisan we have, here. We have unanimity. I yeah. right. And we are going to be back in just a couple of weeks with another show here on Southeast Texas Weekly. We appreciate you being with us. Have a good time.